Welcome to this online worship service here at Trinity Lutheran. Kim, we've just finished something this past week, and what was that? <laughs> well, I finished baking my, my goodies for Thanksgiving meal, cooking. We had Thanksgiving. We celebrated all the many gifts that, that God has given to us, and we are so grateful. And even though we ate our Thanksgiving meal by ourselves, yes. uh, we still enjoyed all of the blessings that God has given to us, and we gave him thanks. But now we're moving into another season. One of my favorites. This is the Advent season, bringing us closer and closer to being able to peek into that manger and see that wonderful, wonderful Christ child that came to save us. As we approach Christmas, we remember that God kept his promise and he will continue to keep all of the promises that he has given to us. And therefore, as we hear his word and as we come together in worship, we praise him for who he is and what he has done for us. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. Oh, he's been good to me. And every seed I sow will grow into a tree, and someday there'll be apples there for everyone in the world to share. The Lord is good to me. Oh, here am I neat the blue, blue sky, doing as I please, singing with my feathered friends, humming with a bee. I wake up every day as happy as can be, because I know that with his care, my apple trees, they will still be there. The Lord's been good to me. Every day as happy as can be Because I know the Lord is there Watching all my friends and me The Lord is good to me Amen, 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 amen This week, we have so much to celebrate. There's been big news in our family. And, and what was that big, big news? Big, big news. Our son, our eldest son, Isaac, and his lovely wife, Melissa, brought into the world a lovely child, a baby, on Monday, the 23rd of November. And her name is? Marnie. Marnie Colette. And Marnie means, in Hebrew, rejoice. And whenever a family has a, a child born into it, there's rejoicing. And so our family is rejoicing. But that got us to thinking. In a few weeks, we'll be celebrating Christmas, which of course is a major time of rejoicing because we look forward to the birth of a, the infant Christ child. A savior who was born for us. And it's because of that baby who was born so long ago that, that we can rejoice. And it's something that we look forward to. Whenever we hear, and we've had uh, three of our children that have had kids, and we had four children ourselves, mm -hmm. there was always a countdown waiting for that time when the child was gonna be born. And I was anxious and I anticipated <laughs> it, but I'm sure you anticipated it a lot more. More so, perhaps, yeah. Yeah, and you look forward to that time. Well. We have something in our church, which is an Advent wreath, which has four candles, and it counts down that time to our Savior's birth. But whenever we think of our Savior's birth, we also are reminded that the Savior who once came as a little baby is going to come again, and we look forward to that as well. And so I'll take just a little bit of time to light the first Advent candle. So 
So let us now continue as we offer up to the Lord our prayers. Lord God, you alone are the one who works miracles. We praise you for the world we live in, for the beauty of creation, for our community and our nation, for the family and friends that we have. Even though Thanksgiving is over, we ask that thanks living may be what we do each and every day. Help us to appreciate all the good things that you give to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, help us to show goodness and kindness to others and all that we say and do so that they may also appreciate this world which you have created. As you have enriched us in, in Christ, help us to enrich the lives of other people. And we ask that your spirit would continue to be sent to your people, to your church, that you would bless the work of pastors, of teachers, church workers, and church musicians, as well as all your members. On this day, we also think of our Lutheran seminaries and universities. Be with them as, as they prepare people to, to go out in service to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our Christian homes. Help husbands and wives live in love and service to each other. Give parents wisdom, patience, and strength as they raise their families. We pray that children would honor their parents and that they would grow up to be of service to their neighbors. Lord, this morning, I am so very grateful for the grandchild which you have given to us. As we also think of all the other babies that are born into families within our community and nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, be with the governing authorities and enable them to, to bring about peace in our nation and in our world. We pray for our president, our governor, military and police, as well as all other civil servants. We also think of our newly elected officials. Increase a spirit of unity and cooperation among the people of our land and as well as the nations of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, be a refuge for all who are in any danger, trouble, sickness, or need. Hear our prayers for the sick and the suffering. Give health to our world and bring the pandemic to an end. Comfort all those who mourn. Sustain them with a confident hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Specifically, we bring before you Barb, Joan, Gloria, Ellen, along with Jean, Pat, and David. We think of Mary, Mike, Henry Otten and his entire family. We think of Gail, Irene, Pastor Jerry, Priscilla, and Joe. Be with these people as well as all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer up all our concerns and our joys in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the 64th chapter of Isaiah. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him joyfully, works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned, 
In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not the iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson comes from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the 13th chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of in heaven will be shaken and then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven from the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Hi everyone, good to see you. I'm Grace and I'm here again with my dog, Spetsy, to talk to you on this first Sunday of Advent. So Advent is the season of waiting and preparation for the birth of the Messiah. And that required a lot of patience on the part of the Jewish people. So when I think of patience, believe it or not, I actually think of my dog, Spetsy, because she's really patient when it comes to one particular thing, and that is her food. 
So Spency, can you come here? Sometimes her obedience is a little off, but her patience is always spot on. So here is Spetsy, and I have a little bowl of Thanksgiving turkey waiting for her. So we're going to see if Spetsy can be patient and wait while I talk to you about Advent. So like I said before, Advent is the season of waiting and preparation for the birth of the Messiah, and the Jewish people had actually been waiting for thousands of years for their Messiah to come. It's even predicted in the book of Genesis, right after Adam and Eve first sinned. In Genesis 3.15, it talks about, or God is talking to Eve and the snake about how the snake will bite at the heels and the son of God will crush his head. So in the end, we know that Jesus is going to conquer the devil and sin and death. So the Jewish people knew for thousands of years that their Messiah was going to come, and they had to patiently wait for his arrival. That being said, we know Jesus, right? We know that Jesus came. Do we still need to be patient? We absolutely do, because we know, because the Bible tells us, that Jesus is going to come again. We know that there will be a second coming of Christ that we get to look forward to as Christians. So Spetsy has been a little patient, but maybe she could do better. Do you think it's about time that Spetsy got her turkey? You think so? Okay. Good girl, Spetsy. So even though Spetsy may have whined a little bit. In the end, she did wait patiently and she got the turkey she deserved. You guys have a wonderful day.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanksgiving is over. Now comes the time when people more earnestly start their preparation for the Christmas celebration. And depending on what traditions you have or your family has, it may include baking cookies, putting up decorations, and of course, buying gifts. Giving gifts is an important part of, of Christmas for so many people. And over the last couple months, my wife and I have received in the mail many advertisements, many flyers from different companies showing us the possibilities that we have when it comes to gifts that we can give others. And now when you turn on the TV, open up your emails, or look on the internet, it seems like there's no shortage with regards to suggestions that you and I can see when it comes to purchasing gifts for others. But once you purchase a gift, once you make that selection, you're not done. Often what people do is they need to wrap up that present before they place it under the Christmas tree or before they, they send it off in the mail. At times, they not only wrap up the, the present with some beautiful Christmas wrapping paper, but they may also use ribbon and put a bow on top. There have been occasions when I have given several gifts to an individual, two or three, and what I've done is I've bundled them. I've wrapped them up each individually, but then I've used ribbon to kind of tie them all together so that when I hand them a present, it's, it's three presents in one. Can you envision someone taking five presents and then using a bowl to connect them and then handing them to you? Can you envision that? Can you envision someone taking 50 gifts and then connecting and tying them together with a bow and, and handing them to you. Or how about this? How about 500 gifts at one time, all tied together and given to you or to your household? That would be something. And if that happened, we might think that's a little bit of an overkill. My wife and I, we limit the amount of of gifts that we give at Christmas, as well as at other times of the year. But as I looked at Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I was reminded that God is not like me. God is not stingy. Our Lord is not a miser when it comes to, to giving things to others. His grace is abundant, which means his kindness knows no end. He continues to give. That's who our God is. And so as St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, he begins by thanking God for all the gifts that he has given to his people, to the Christians there at Corinth. And God is able to give these gifts and all of these spiritual gifts to the people because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who, who purchased all of these gifts through his suffering, death, and, and resurrection. He made it all possible. And so whenever we receive gifts from God, it's like they're wrapped up and tied together in our Savior, Jesus Christ. But there's something special about the gifts that God gives to us. We not only receive them and we rejoice in them, but many of the gifts that God gives are so that we also might share them with others and be a blessing to them. This is what St. Paul is getting at throughout his whole letter to the first Corinthians. And we see this also at the very beginning. And so let us look at some of the opening verses of first Corinthians and, and discover what God would have to say to you and me at this time. We read, I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in all speech and in all knowledge. 
even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you await for the, the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we look at this passage, and as St. Paul speaks about being rich in every way and not lacking anything, what comes to my mind is a lot more than 500 gifts all bundled together and handed to a congregation all at once. God is generous. But as I look and as I hear what St. Paul speaks about, there's still something which still astounds me when it comes to God, our gracious giver. What astounds me is this, that he calls us into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. That means we are part of his family. And these words apply to you and me. You and I have been called into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. In Christ, you are a part of God's family. In Christ, your life has meaning and your life has a future. You are not a nobody. Your life is not spinning out of control or going nowhere, which for many people, it seems to be the case with the shutdown and with this pandemic and with regards to not being able to do what we have been able to do before. But we are reminded in this passage of scripture that we are somebody because we are with Jesus. And we are also moving to a future that God has planned for all of his children. And again, all of this is possible because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so St. Paul thanks God for the gifts that he has given Christians, which includes you and me. And yet we are reminded that, that we are not only blessed, but we are to be a blessing. As we live out our lives in gratitude towards God, we too are to enrich others through our words, through our actions, through our prayers. Now the gospel lesson for today, Jesus speaks a parable in it. And in that parable, we hear about a master who puts his servants in charge of his household and, and goes away on a long journey, but one day is, is going to come back. Now that parable is actually talking about Jesus and his church, his people. It's speaking about you and me. Jesus is the master who ascended into heaven after his resurrection. But we, we are reminded that one day he is going to return and make all things new. And the question is, until Jesus Christ comes back or until he calls us home to himself, what are you and I to do? The answer is simple. We don't become lazy. We don't forget about the return of our Savior. Rather, we carry on the business of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what has he tasks us to do? To love him and to love one another as ourselves. That we use the, the time and abilities and resources we have to make a difference in other people's lives. Or as St. Paul describes it at the very beginning of Corinthians, we have been enriched so that others may be enriched as we interact with them. I realize that this is difficult to do at this time. We are hindered in, in what we can do and what contact we can make with other people. And so maybe we might have to become a little bit more creative with regards to how God can use us to be a blessing to others. But I believe that you and I can still make a difference. In fact, that's what we are called to do. At the beginning of this message, I talked about how God has given us gifts in Jesus Christ. I talked about preparation for Christmas and the various things that, that people do. One other thing which is associated so much with Christmas is light. 
We put lights on our Christmas tree. Many people put lights on their home or decorate their home with, with candles at this time of the year. There are many things that light symbolizes in the Bible. God is light. But in the New Testament, we see above all that Jesus is the true light which God the Father sent to this world. But in the Gospel of Matthew, we are reminded that because of what God has done for us, we also have become light. Jesus speaks to his disciples. That includes you and me. And he says, you are the light of the world. And then he goes on to say, let your light so shine that men may see your good deeds, your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. St. Paul says the same thing as he speaks about spiritual gifts and how we are to use them to enrich other people's lives. And again, why do we do this? Well, using that light imagery, it's because we live in a world where there is darkness. We see this in our own life when we become depressed, when things don't go our way, when there's pain and sorrow as a part of, of our living. And as we look out in the world, we also have to say it is darkness, especially as we compare it with regards to how God would want people to live, act, speak, and behave towards one another. And you and I are called to be light in this dark world. I was visiting a member of Trinity a couple weeks ago. And as I was talking to her over the phone, Joan mentioned that she was feeling down. This, of course, was because of the restrictions that had been placed upon her where she lived because of this pandemic. And she is not alone. I've talked to many people and, and they do feel a little bit down at because of what has been transpiring in our world. We're not able to make that connection as we have in the past with others. And it's painful. It is depressing. But then she told me something which helped lift up her spirits. And what, what, it, what it was was this. She put up her Christmas tree earlier than normal. And she's not the only one. Our neighbors who live across the back fence have had their Christmas tree up for, for over three weeks now. And as I was commenting to my wife, I said, it just makes sense that people put up their Christmas tree earlier. And she said, why? And I said, because Jesus brings joy, because Jesus brings hope. And for Christians, the Christmas tree is a symbol of, of Jesus coming to earth. The star on the top of the Christmas tree or the angel on the top of the Christmas tree, you know, proclaim that a savior has come into this dark world, into our lives as well, into the darkness that we have. And he lightens it up, reminding us that in him we are loved, reminding us that in him we do have purpose, even if we are confined and not able to do as much as we have been able to do before. And not only does Jesus bring hope and light into our lives, but as we allow God to, to use our gifts, our abilities, and our resources, we can be a light to others who are experiencing darkness in their life. We can allow the, the light of Christ to shine through us and make a difference. As you think about Christmas and the preparations which are needed before we celebrate it, I want you to remember today that God has already prepared you. God has already gifted you with what you need to be a blessing to others. And my prayer is today that in this world of darkness, in this world where darkness at times even comes upon us, that we would remember the light of Christ in our own lives and how God has enriched us in Jesus Christ. And that we not only would rejoice in that, but that we would also seek to bring light, joy, kindness, 
and goodness into the lives of others. Amen. Yes, Thanksgiving is over, but that feeling of gratitude for all that our Heavenly Father has done for us should be something we celebrate and we appreciate every single day, that Thanksgiving. And now we're moving towards that celebration of our Savior's birth. But as we come before our God to worship Him, we once again thank Him for you for your support, for your prayers, for your concern for other Christians. And we encourage you to continue to be a blessing to others. We invite you now to pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the evening. Praise Him when you're smiling, praise Him when you're breaking. Praise Him in the sun and praise Him in the starlight. Praise Him every season, praise Him through the dark times. Celebrate, celebrate, shout it from the mountain top. Celebrate, celebrate, even with a broken heart. Till dawn awakes, we'll sing your praise, dancing in the dark. For all our days, our song to say. Praise Him with your hands and praise Him with your face down. Praise Him with the trumpet, praise Him with a loud sound. Heaven is a party, join the celebration. Come on everybody, time to start dancing. Oh yeah! Celebrate, celebrate, shout it from the mountain top. of Christmas coming. Trees are going up and homes are being lit beautifully. O come, O come, Emmanuel. That wonderful song that most of us as Lutherans were raised with. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The last verse of it. O come, desire of nations, bind. In one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease. And be thyself our King of Peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. My prayer for you and your homes and your families is that as you prepare, we look forward to Emmanuel once again coming as this infant. And until we can sing carols together, all together in church or in our heavenly mansion, I ask that God just give you a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. God bless you and come join us again.